Welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today we're going to look into how to actually use the character 2D body um, in order to apply some physics to our character, what we tried to control the last time. So before we start with the programming part, let's just modify our entities of the scene for now. So we are looking now for a static uh, body, 2D, because we are in the 2D space. And we want to use all the assets from the area 2D, the child assets, for the static body 2D. So we just drag them over and get rid of the area 2D body. Um, then we actually will quickly modify it a bit. It will not look super nice, but we want to have it a bit more wider so that we can use it to move on or along the surface of this particular um, entity. So in order to do that, we just grab it there and then resize it using the tool, make the width bigger. It will look a bit strange, but you can replace it with any kind of asset you prefer. For simplification, I just use what we have already. Then we just center it a bit, save the whole scene, press play to ensure that it got updated properly. And we can still use the arrow keys, of course, to navigate with our kind of rotating character. But the collision, of course, was now not detected as we did it with the area 2D um, collision detection example. Let's also get rid of the um, area 2D player specific um, functions what we linked. And now we continue in the code actually to update our player class. Um, with this new type. Instead of the area 2D, we need to use the character body 2D. In addition, as we will apply some gravity, we don't need actually the down key anymore or any longer for our controls because that will be controlled anyway through the gravity what we're going to apply um, soon. As a next step, we will actually get rid of the previous defined functions. And then let's get rid of the rotation because now we will apply physics. So let's get away with the rotation and the position and actually start um, splitting up the um, physics process or process physics method in sub functions. So one for gravity and one for the input controls. Therefore we create again the implementation for the player and define two new functions there. Let's call one apply gravity and the second one apply controls. As a next step, we just move our control logic out into the specific function we just um, created now. So that means we move that particular code into the apply controls. And of course, we need to modify them a bit. First of all, we need to ensure that it's a mutable um, method. And for simplification, we just pass the velocity because with this uh, character to the body, um, the base is deriving a velocity value, what we will modify based on the input of the, of the pressed key. And therefore we just make as an input the current velocity and return the modified version of the velocity as a vector 2 of the function. Then of course we need to update now the inner things of the function as well. So when we press up, we actually want to jump. When we press left, we actually want to move to the left. So that means the velocity value x um, gets modified for jumping the y. Um, and when we move to the right, we actually again modify the velocity x value. Let's also define some um, kind of constant values there. So the jump speed and the uh, move speed. Please note that these are just some, some values um, 
as I did some experiments in the past with it. So I just use a very simple um, pattern here. Um, also, the code is now not the best practice. Um, it should just highlight how simple it is to update the velocity value, which gets later applied for, on the character. And also please note as we apply and change the velocity input value from the method to so the argument of it, um, you need to put a mute in front of it, otherwise you cannot mutate it. And then we continue kind of in a similar fashion for the apply gravity. But this time we update again the y coordinate of the input velocity um, and return the modified value. Heading back to the physics process, we can finally start retrieving the velocity value from our base. So therefore we reference again self.base mutable and get velocity. Then we declare it as mutable as we are passing it as a mutable value to our functions, what we just defined. So therefore velocity equals and then call the apply gravity with the velocity and then velocity we do again self apply the controls with the modified velocity. And then we want to apply actually our new velocity, so therefore we will use the move and slide function from the base. Then let's try and compile, he heading back to the editor and press the play button. And as you can see, nothing happens. The reason is simple, because we did not apply the new velocity value. So we need to ensure to set the velocity, what we just have updated. In order to do that, we will again rely on the um, base and therefore set the new velocity value. Next, we compile it again, heading back to the editor and start our test application. This time, the gravity was working, the moving works also, but as you can see when I press the arrow, it just decreases slowly. So actually I would prefer to have some more precise control, but in order to see a bit better the gravity, let's move our sprite a bit up, save it 
and try it again. And you can see it's actually falling as expected and colliding with the static body underneath. So, but now let's make the contours a bit more precise. So let's get rid of this kind of sliding. So therefore we rely on the move and collide method. And in addition to that, the jumping was also not working. So therefore we will um, apply and fix the Y coordinate. And now actually the jumping is working. The longer I press the button, the higher the character gets, as you can see here. Okay, that one was fixed, but now, but now back to the bit more granular controlled uh, controls. So as previously mentioned, we will now rely on the uh, move and collide, which actually gets the velocity passed and then updates accordingly. And we also want to ensure that when there is a collision, that we also properly um, handle that particular case. So that means we apply to the velocity um, again some, uh, some value where we say the slip of the normals of the collision. Now let's save the changes, compile again, ignore the warning for now and save and press the play button. And as you can see, we are now moving with a better control without sliding when releasing the key. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time again.